Good morning, everyone. Yes, I've been MIA uh, for a couple of days. I was battling a head cold. Still um, have a little bit of the scratchy throat, but um, surprisingly, I'm doing so much better than, I mean, I sleep for two days and drink a whole bunch of lemon and honey water, and apparently that's like the trick to getting well. <laughs> so I am feeling better. Um, thank you for everybody's love and concern. If you ever um, wonder where I am, usually I will post an update on the community tab to let you know what's going on with me. So Venus moved into Scorpio a couple of days ago, and um, this is I, you know, a lot of people really like Venus and Scorpio, um, and I do too, because with Venus and Scorpio, we're all a little bit more passionate. We're all a little bit more, like our blood's boiling a little bit more for, um, like, desires and um, wanting to uh, meet new people, wanting to rekindle relationships, stuff like that. Um, this time around and for the next seven years when Venus is in Scorpio, it will be opposing Uranus, which is in Taurus. So this is going to also be a time where there are going to be some relationship upheavals, I guess, if you, if you will. Um, today's a pretty good day though, because the sun is sextile Jupiter and sextile is a comfortable relationship between two planets and um, with the sun in Libra, sextile Jupiter, everybody's a little bit more optimistic and happy right now. So there could be a lot of new relationships that are starting right now. Like, because I mean, there are a lot of people out on the prowl. <laughs> Just really be careful. And um, this could also, especially with um, Venus opposing Uranus, and the full moon in Aries, which is all going to be happening this weekend. Um, I will be going over the full moon ritual, the stuff that you'll need and stuff tomorrow morning. Um, but if you want to be a part of the actual full moon ritual, we'll, we'll do the meditation, we'll do the ritual, and we'll do a Reiki healing circle. Um, all of that information is on my website. We do like a weekly meditation. And this week, because the full moon is landing at the same time that we would normally do the meditations, we're just going to do it all together. So, and it's probably going to be longer than an hour, I think. I don't know. We'll see. Um, those meditations have been really amazing. And if you haven't had a chance to do one with us yet, they're very powerful. I'm recommending all of my clients to do at least one because then you get a recorded version so, um, and it's fun, but this one's going to be really focusing on standing on your own, standing up for yourself, um, and with the Venus opposing Uranus, there could be some relationships that end. There could be some things with your finances that get really, really, like, jacked up, and you're, you have to, like, fix really quickly, so, and... It's not at exact today, but it will be happening this weekend during the same time of the full moon. So, and um, we can talk about that a little bit more tomorrow. Um, but we also have the moon in Pisces. So everything is just a little bit, just softer right now. Um, so the moon in Pisces is trining Mercury. It's trining Venus. It's um, making everybody a little extra emotional. It's making everybody, so you could have these, this kind of up and down day today where everything's really, really optimistic at one point and you're feeling really, really good. And then it all sort of towards the end, <laughs> or you could just be like me who, um, is just doing a really, like, I, I love being in alignment with myself because I can control my emotions um, sometimes things get a little much, but then I decide that I'm not going to allow myself to sit in it and I do something to feel better, do something to feel good. Um, it's so interesting in life where, uh, it's almost a badge of honor to be miserable. And I am teaching everybody to no longer be that way. 
And in my self-alignment workshop, the next one is going to be on October 21st, um, I talk about the amazing ways that we can feel good and the, and, and the six, um, six, seven ways that we block ourselves from living our best life. And when you can master your emotions, when you can say, that's no longer serving me, I'm not going to put myself in the middle of it anymore, when you can allow yourself to take charge of your life and you don't let any situation or any person come in and mess it all up or make it all messy, when you are really um, in alignment with yourself, it's like this freedom. It's amazing the, the kind of the freedom that you can feel when you and I don't want to say when you when you don't give a shit anymore because that's not really what it is because I still care. Um, you can still care and be in alignment. You just recognize that you're no longer going to place yourself in situations that are harmful and toxic to you and you can see it coming from a mile away because you know the red flags right you know right up front. And you don't allow yourself to get sucked into the red flags. And I don't just mean in romantic relationships. I mean in the story of life because there are red flags all over the place. Don't go there. Don't do that. Don't do this. Don't whatever, right? But um, when we're not aware of the red flags and we just kind of like go head first into it because we're really, really stubborn and our egos are in charge and we're like, no, we're going to do it because I have something to prove. You're not in alignment. So if you would like to know, <laughs> if you would like to know my secret to living your best life and just genuinely being happy, no matter what situation you're in, genuinely being happy, sign up for the alignment course. And if you can't make it, this time I made it on a Monday evening because there were some people that couldn't do it on a Saturday afternoon. So this one I made on a Monday evening um, and if you can't make it to this one, it will be recorded just like the last one was recorded as well. And you will receive a recording just like an hour or two after, after we're done. Um, and I still have some spots for the six month forecast, the 2020 forecast, the pre-order. If you pre-order your 2020 six month forecast, with me, you will also get December. These are being scheduled the first two weeks in November. All of the information is on my website for the meditations, for the self-alignment course. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the rings on my website, these are amazing. The green onyx, green onyx stone is really good for the heart chakra. And, and, it's, and I actually kind of like came to this realization yesterday that a lot of this newfound energy, optimism, feeling really good about myself started when I was wearing when I started wearing this ring, and I've been wearing it for. I guess it really didn't start when I started wearing the ring, but it amped up. It was it. I didn't like. I realized that last night. I was like, I started wearing this ring, and that's when I really started feeling super good, right? So, <clears throat> the energy today that's coming out is very interesting because I feel like a lot of us are in this phase of um, you really want to manifest something new in your life, but you can't get out of your own way. It's this um, fear, probably fear of failing, fear that if you um, go in a certain direction, it's not going to turn out the way that you want it to. And one of the things that we learn in the self-alignment course is how to um, allow yourself to believe, trust, and have faith in not only yourself, but a higher source that's taking care of you. And when you truly have that faith and you truly have that trust, and, and that's when you know that everything's going to be okay, everything's going to turn out the way that it's supposed to, um, when you have that faith and you have that trust, you don't sit in a nine of swords state because you say, I'm giving up my, I'm giving up all of my limitations. I'm no longer going to limit myself. 
I'm going to say, I'll do the work to this point because that's all I can do. And then I'm going to leave the rest up to the universe. And then you have faith and you let it go. And you do that knowing um, that everything is going to happen for your highest good. When we get out of our own way and we realize that things happen in life, not just because we want them to, but they happen for our highest good, that's when you can really take a step back and get out of your way. And that's what we're teaching. That's what I'm teaching in the self-alignment workshop. So if you're having problems getting out of your own way and just being genuinely happy with where you are in life and not, not necessarily happy with your surroundings, but happy with what's going on inside of you, that's the biggest challenge, right? So we have the Four of Swords, we have the Magician, and we have the Knight of Wands. And these three right here are telling me the things that you really want to manifest in your life. What you keep doing is you're like, I don't know. You do this like wishy-washy thing, right? Um, like, I'm not really sure what I'm trying to manifest. I don't even know what it is that I, I need in my life or I want in my life or like, where am I even going? What am I even doing? How am I, how is this even, what, how am I doing this, right? That's when this Four of Swords comes in. Because that's the meditation. And I guarantee you, if you have a reading with me and you're like, but Betsy, I can't, I, I keep trying to figure out what direction to go in and I don't know what to do. I, the first thing I will say to you is, are you meditating? Because if you're not meditating, if you're not getting quiet, if you're not communing with God, if you're not communing with your higher self, of course you don't know what direction to go in. Because you're not even listening to yourself. You're not listening to your higher self. You're not listening to what the universe wants you to do. And that's why I suggest come to at least one of the meditations that we do because that will help you to relax yourself. It'll help you to release the tension. It'll help you to go in a new direction, go in, and, um, what's the word that I would use? Um, silence, silence, right? Quieting your mind, getting grounded, getting silent, getting lined back up with you, right? Because we have the nine of swords, the Eight of Cups, and the World. So part of this stress that you're putting yourself through is the fact that you know that something has to end here. There's an ending that's looming. And you know that walking away from it is the only thing that you can do because emotionally you were once invested in it and you're just not anymore. You're no longer emotionally invested. This feels really dark. Just give me a second. I'm going to lighten it up a little. Maybe not too much. Oh, see? Ta-da! It was so dark. So something that you were emotionally invested in, the reason why you're so stressed out in the Nine of Swords is that you know that you have to end something or you know that an end is coming. Here's the thing. When you're in alignment and there is an ending coming in your life, you can look at that ending and you can say, I accept that this is the ending because one of the things that I teach in the, in the self-alignment workshop is how rejection is more of a protection mechanism from the universe than we care to believe it to be. Because we think that rejection is a bad thing. It's perceived as bad because it makes us feel uncomfortable. It makes us sad. It gives us emotions. Um, the rejection could be not getting the job that you want, not getting the relationship that you want, not getting the house that you want, whatever rejection it is, right? And it makes us feel bad. But you have to understand that when the universe says no to you, there's usually something bigger on the other side. So I teach you how to change your thought process when it comes to rejection. Um, four of Swords. Because I do feel like if you were to allow yourself to get quiet right now and do some meditations, um, 
there's a really good chance that you would feel a lot more grounded and secure with the decisions that you're making. So the king of pentacles can do no wrong. The king of, he can actually do wrong, but the king of pentacles is a very fair leader. Um, he um, runs his kingdom with dignity, right? But he has to be grounded and he has to be very sure of his decisions. So in order to embody the king of pentacles energy, which is where we're headed, right? That's what we want. We want to feel grounded. We want to feel secure in what we're doing. We want to be able to make the decisions for ourselves and our people that's going to be the best possible decisions for everyone, right? And some of those things that you're trying to manifest, you're not entirely even sure if it's, you know, am I supposed to be manifesting this? Am I not supposed to be? You know what? My rule of thumb when it comes to manifesting things is, first of all, be real, be realistic in your manifestations, but be specific. Like, you can't say, I'm manifesting a million dollars in the next 24 hours. And then not do anything to get the million dollars, right? You still have to do the work. You still have to be realistic when you're manifesting, but you would be very, very surprised at how realistic some things could be if you allow yourself to open up a little bit more. And I feel like with this, there's, there's a change that's happening with these manifestations. Some of you aren't seeing it or some of you need to change your manifestation some of you need to transform your manifestations into something because it's the other thing is is where we'll like start to manifest something and it's not for our highest good or it's not for you know our our it's not for the best for us but we ignore that and we just keep trying to manifest it and keep trying to manifest it and you you will hit a brick wall when you're trying to manifest something that's not for your highest good and you're ignoring the fact that it's not good for you, like a relationship, right? So you're trying to manifest the perfect relationship into your life. You're trying to manifest maybe a king of pentacles into your life. And that person is toxic to you. And you already know this. You've already been through it. But you're trying to really manifest this person into your life. And the universe is going to be like, no, you're not, I'm not going to allow you to do that to yourself, right? So some of you are ignoring the transformational process in order to manifest what you want. Because really, it's not that person that you want. It's what you thought they stood for. You had a version of them in your mind of who you thought they were. And that's not who they are. You know? So Knight of Wands. Here we are. So we have the Page of Pentacles and the Sun on the Knight of Wands. Okay. I want to say, for those of you that are confused because you keep trying to manifest a specific thing into your life and it's not working and you keep getting rejected and it keeps coming back to you, um, I feel, and, and it's almost like you refused to see that it's a negative thing in your life or it's not going to be a positive thing in your life. Um, you need to like humble yourself and start over again because there's a, there's, um, the sun is, is the best card you can get in the deck and it's trying to shine. It's trying to show you clarity. It's trying to show you the direction that you're supposed to be going in, but you refusing to see it because you want it to look as, see what I mean? When I say refusing to see it, the reason why I'm saying that is I have the four of cups here. That person is refusing to see what's actually in front of him. He's only focusing or refusing to see the gift that he's being given. He's only focused on what he wants to focus on, right? These three cups down here. And he's refusing the gift. So there's a there's this transition that's happening 
where some of you are being offered from the universe something that you never would have guessed allowed or anything into your life or into your existence sorry I have a no, I'm not going to get into it. Um, I have a... <laughs> My skin is breaking out. It's like hives or something over here. So, yeah, and the makeup's like not helping. Um, like, <laughs> it's embarrassing. Anyway, so, yeah, there's some kind of healing process that um, you have to allow yourself to see a different view, a different direction, a different take on what's being done. You see? And that's where your anxiety is coming from with this Nine of Swords is because you don't want to see it. Your ego saying, no, this is what I want. And you're putting your foot down and you don't want to see it. And so it's time for you to shift the energy because you're in charge of shifting the energy. So we have the Wheel of Fortune on the Nine of Swords. And if this is somebody, like if the King of Pentacles doesn't represent you, but it represents somebody else, and they have pulled their energy back from you, you have to respect that. You have to respect it and stop trying to push it. And if they show back up in your life, that's fantastic, right? The Knight of Swords, the Knight of Wands, they show back in. But they better show up as a different person because you're just going to end back up in this anxiety state of mind again. And I don't care how strong the connection is. Like, I'm, I'm so exhausted from hearing, but Betsy, we had such a strong connection. I've had a strong connection with several people in my life. That doesn't mean that I'm going to spend forever with them. That means that they taught me lessons about myself that I needed to know. And this Wheel of Fortune is saying you are in charge of shifting the energy. Sure, you can stay in that Nine of Swords if you want to. If, you, if you'd like, let's see what this Eight of Cups is. But I feel like the way that you're going to shift this energy is if you realize how much of an energy drain it was to hold on to the past, right? Because that's what you're doing. Six of Cups on the Eight of Cups. You're holding on to a past feeling, a past person, a past emotion. And this Venus in Scorpio can make a person very, very obsessed. Right? So even, even for the person who doesn't get obsessed with anything, they can become extremely obsessed with this kind of energy that's going on. And with that Venus opposing Uranus coming up this weekend with the Aries full moon, there could be a lot of obsess obsessive people like, don't get a restraining order put on you <laughs> during this time. <laughs> on my Twitter, I said, Venus is in Scorpio, who's stalking? <laughs> Because it's true. Like, this is when you start to, like, slip into people's DMs and, like, you start stalking their page. Or, like, you, like, I've known people during Venus since, like, last year. Whew. Um, somebody said to me, I even made, like, a new Facebook page so I could look at his Facebook page without him knowing it was me. Girl, <laughs> don't do it. All right. So the Queen of Pentacles is ending a cycle here. And I feel like either you're the King of Pentacles where you're needing to um, allow yourself to get quiet so you can start manifesting in a better way, or you're the Queen of Pentacles that's realizing that you can no longer hold yourself back from the the things that you, um, you know need to change in your life in order for you to manifest and live your best life. Like, there are some situations here, and it may not even be a relationship. Maybe you are perfectly happy either out of a relationship or you're perfectly happy within a relationship, but there are certain things that you're trying to manifest, and you keep trying to do it by the same way over and over and over and over again, right? And you have to recognize where it's not working and what you need to do to change. And if it's your attitude that needs to change, if it's the fact that you need to stop trying to push, push, push for something to happen when clearly it's not going to happen, um, whatever it is, whatever it is that you're trying to manifest and you're ignoring whatever you're ignoring the transitional period or you're ignoring the change that needs to happen, 
that can be really energetically draining. So don't kid yourself. If you have to walk away from something that's been holding you hostage, or if you have to end a cycle in order for you to see things a little bit more clear, do it, no matter how uncomfortable it is. Because I guarantee you, it's going to be less uncomfortable than this Nine of Swords that you keep yourself in. Because once you actually face the fear, or once you actually allow yourself to see things from a different perspective, like I said, it's like freedom. It's like being, it's like becoming free. So I hope you guys are doing really well. Join me for tomorrow. I'm going to walk through the steps for the Aries full moon. If you would like to be part of the full ritual where we do the whole ritual together, that'll be Sunday evening. Um, and all of that information to be a part of the Aries full moon ritual is on my website, fearlessintuition.net, or you can check the description box below. I love you guys. Thank you for all the love and support while I was out for the last couple of days. Um, and I am feeling better. So I'll see you all soon. Bye.